I don't know. Even if anything happens, which I doubt you know how I am, it's inevitable, you say, down at your phone. That is now on the floor, safely in your hands while your whole body is slumped over your bed. I don't know. How are you, Lion? Hina says sarcastically, replying and teasing you. As of now, I'm fine, as long as I don't get myself into a mess, you replied dryly to your friend. Hina only laughed. If anyone would know, it's her. First page. Dear Diary, today I got asked out. I accepted, and now I yet again have a boyfriend, and have gotten myself into a mess. I thought I wasn't going to do that, but it was bound to happen anyway. No hard feelings. See you, Lion. I was wondering, do you still like me, Lion? The question was sudden. It definitely caught you off guard. The truth is, you had told the boy you liked him because you needed someone to talk to when you were, well, bored as you were the day you had told him that in the first place. You didn't actually have any intention of dating the boy, thinking he was probably hooked up on someone else, or maybe just not interested at all. Yet here you were, finding yourself saying yes, knowing where this was headed. In the back of your mind, the color gray was projected, a color you have been envisioning lately. It's always been there, especially when you lie. You could always see the faint color of gray in your mind. You felt bad, which you don't usually feel for most people, but he was your friend, so it would be saddening to know you would only date him for at least a week before dropping the whole thing, not wanting to become serious. It made you sad, but it also fed your boredom. It was nothing new. Would you, uh, like, you know, want to try dating? He asked. You could tell his whole body was nervous from the pause in his voice. You agreed, nonetheless. That was probably the worst way to ask you out. He laughed, slightly embarrassed at the whole situation. You smiled and laughed along with him, reassuring him it was perfectly fine by you. Plus, he wouldn't have to do anything big anyway. Second page. Dear Diary, Today has been three days since the whole mess with getting a boyfriend, and he's already starting trouble. Always weigh in. You look down at your phone, and you see it has been ringing, wondering why Emma was calling you at such a late time. You question, Do these people ever sleep? You pondered if you should answer or not upon seeing the text message, you are just sent. Girl, we need to talk, Emma. You give a sigh, answering the call, already having a small suspicion of what it could be. What's up, Emma? You speak, but get cut off by the blonde on the other end. It's about Mikey, she said in a serious tone. Not one to intimidate you, but it did make you a little nervous. What's the matter? You ask. He says he's, he thinks you're avoiding him, well, maybe not, but, like, effort, yeah, that, well, he didn't say that, but she started, of course, he's already becoming self-conscious. Emma, everything is fine, but I'll talk to him, thanks for letting me know, you say. Emma hums on the other end of the call, and then the call ends. You go to your contacts and select Mikey ready to talk to him about whatever was going on with him already. He wasn't supposed to make this hard for you, but they always do. Once he picked up, you took the lead. Listen, nothing is wrong and I really like you, just please stop being so goddamn prideful and shy, is what you wish you could have said. Nonetheless, by the end of the night, the vibe seemed okay, so you went to bed, dreading the next time you had to see the boy, and excited to tell Hina all of it. Third page. Dear Diary, 
I'm not too sure what to think, but for now, I'll play things by ear. Maybe I can change things. As always, YN. You had to admit the fact that morning. You had to admit the fact that every morning Mikey would text you a small good morning, and every night would come along with a good night was cute, but something was missing. It's the effort. I'm telling you, it is. How in the world is Mikey gonna date you if he can't even speak to you half the time, Wyan? Hina's face was pinned against her hand. In almost a minute since you had told her about everything going on with Mikey. You shook your head, disappointed. You would feel so bad if you dumped him though. Not even for him, but for Draken. He's a close friend of yours, and you know his relationship with Emma was going fairly well. Your chocolate brown skin glistened as you looked out the window, the sun setting. When the thought of you liking Mikey went around, Draken tried, but he couldn't contain the slight happiness he showed. Emma and him liked the idea of double dates, going to the movies or hanging out at the skate park. Of course, you and Emma could never come to Tillman meetings, so that double date was out of the question. But you would be lying if you said you didn't agree with the idea. Sure, you didn't want it to last long, but the idea of your friends being happy would make you more than grateful. I mean, did you even hear him? Hina complained, snapping you out of your thoughts. With your head perched on your hand, you looked up at her to continue. You began to remember the conversation that took place between you and Mikey and Hina last night on a group call. You and Hina were speaking, and you did everything you could to include him in the conversation, yet he was quiet. No, he didn't say much. You began. Exactly. The people around you looked over to your table, and you gave an apologetic look with a small wave. Hina, shh, you scolded the girl. But she was right. He barely said anything to you. You would show him, newly taken pretty photos of you and he would completely ignore it or give a hum that he had the audacity to tell emma he felt as if you were being distant with him you scoffed at the thought what exactly is he trying to get at hina can i be honest you asked your friend hina's eyes looked up into yours curiosity written in the edges what's the matter wyan i've realized the game isn't very fun when there is only one person playing i need to get him to budge show the mop who runs the relationship hina nodded in agreement she called him a mop because of his hair but you would always like to think of him as a sheep you were not exactly sure why Maybe it's his soft persona when he's around the one he cares about, or just the simple answer, his hair. But you know, he obviously isn't all that sweet. Dear Diary, a wolf in sheep's clothing is what I'm toying with at the moment, but that's alright. There are bigger predators out there. Fourth page. Dear Diary, Today something unexpected happened, but when does it not? Always, why in? It killed you to know that you were hopelessly playing with your friend. You felt bad because today he was taking you to the mall. You were both gonna go to the bookstore. Once you arrived, Mikey took you to a store that contained all of your favorite TV shows, t-shirts lined on the wall, mugs and glasses and gifts. It was something that you got excited over. You jumped up and down as soon as you had gotten in. Mikey looked at you for a moment. You felt his eyes on you. But you did not bother to look back. You were somewhat embarrassed that you even jumped in the first place. You saw a shirt you liked and began to pick it up, walking over to the cashier and taking out your wallet. Yet, soon enough, Mikey strolled over to you and insisted on paying for the item. You refused, but he wouldn't give up. You shook your head and sighed in defeat, knowing that he did it to be nice. 
God, I hate it here. Okay, Lion, let's sneak into the movie theaters. He snickered while you both walked out of the store. Uh, uh, what? A about the bookstore? You asked, looking up at him. We can go after. Right now I want to watch a movie for free. Come on, let's go. He said quietly, taking your wrist lightly and dragging you over to the theaters. You felt a small tickle in your soul. You were happy that he was doing all of this. You were excited to hang out with him, but it felt different. You didn't like it one bit, and you needed to keep reminding yourself that you didn't like him one bit either. Something was telling you that you couldn't like him, that it was impossible. Fifth page. Dear diary, life is full of cycles. Every person has a different one. This is mine. Always. Why in? Are you serious? Mikey asked, his voice low and quiet, his face upset and distraught. He didn't know what to think. You just stood there, not able to say anything. I trusted you. Opened up to you, he said, his voice now raspy, tears threatening to pour out of the corner of his eyes. You continued to stay silent. <laughs> Never again, he spoke. He shook his head, getting on his motorcycle and leaving you there. I'm sorry, you whispered. Today was the day you broke up with Mikey, because of who you were, of course. There was nothing you could do about it. It was over, and you had blocked him. He had blocked you. You had issues. That's how it will always be, until further notice. You leave the people who are close to you because of the most personal things going on in your life. You don't know how to deal with both. That's your problem. You were the problem. If there was a way to go back and redo everything, re-meet everyone, make a difference approach, you would. But stuff like that doesn't actually exist. There's no such thing as time machines, no way to go and undo the past. You cave yourself in a room, stay away from your social life, all for what? Your pride? Your feelings? You can't balance life? It will be like this until you finally learn how to. Now, you have to face the consequences. Nah, I just think you're a normal teenager going through the motions of a life, Hina said, snapping you out of your thoughts. You always had her when things were rough. Hopefully, she would never leave you. Even if you did. Even if she did, you would probably deserve that. You put your hands behind your head as you lay down on the checkered blanket. You and Hina agreed to meet up today and talk about things. You sighed, an action that was second nature to you. Yep, just going through the motions. Um, so that is actually the end of the video. Wow, this, uh, this was not what I was thinking. This kind of sucked and it hurt my heart. Um, I haven't really watched a lot of Demon Slayer, but, you know, I think I, I finished, like, the first or second season, and... Man, this one sucks so much because, you know, he really sounded like a good guy. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed. I know this is like not a fluff or a smut. This was um angst, but you know, I will put a warning at the beginning or a link in the title of the video, so please <laughs> or something. Yeah, you okay. I'm gonna go edit. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed. I haven't posted in a while, so like here I am. I'm alive. We're gonna start doing some karma and asana ones because I'm rewatching Assassination Classroom and falling in love all over again. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm gonna peace out and let me know in the comments down below if you guys want an asana or a karma one next. And then I will, you know, go off, you know, majority vote. <laughs> I love you guys. Have a good day, night, afternoon, morning, whenever you're listening to this. Goodbye. You better listen up, listen up. Nice night.